All right, Logan Paul came out to open up Raw, and he's running down Ricochet. He's going to make a spectacle out of him on Saturday. Ricochet comes out, and they go back and forth about each other, what they don't like, but they begrudgingly respect each other, and they finally do a half-hearted fist bump. And as they go to leave, Logan says, oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. After the match is over, the ring announcer is going to announce the winner. And that uh, ring announcer over there is Samantha Urban. Isn't that your fiancé? So how's it going to feel? Hope there's no hard feelings when I have your girl saying the winner of this match is Logan Paul. See, so was... Ricochet flips out, oh. attacks him, brawl. Man. And then Ricochet tries to springboard, and Logan punched this bloke out of midair, left him for dead. Knocked him out right in front of his woman. You know, I think he could have been actually a little bit rougher about that. He's like, what are you going to do when your woman says that the winner of the match, like, just, you didn't even need to say that. Just what are you going to do when my name comes out of your woman's mouth? And then that Ricochet could have jumped right on him there. Too lewd. Too lewd? That's not viral enough? Gunther and Imperium did an interview. So Gunther is upset at old Ludwig because he keeps messing up. But he says tonight he's going to make good. Take out that barefoot idiot Matt Riddle. And Sunday I am going to beat Drew McIntyre. So it's Ludwig and Matt Riddle. And uh, they had a good match. And to their credit, you know, this was a great crowd. There's like 12, 13,000 people there. But it's one of those crowds where, you know, they're not necessarily super into stuff. you got to get them into it. And it took him about, I'd say, two-thirds of this match to finally hit a big spot and get the crowd into it. And at that point, the crowd was into the match. And Kaiser finally uh, uh, avoided the moonsault, running in Zagiri, hit his DDT, got the pin, and then Gunther was very proud of Ludwig Kaiser, offered him a handshake afterwards. Man, I don't know if I like where they're going with Otis and Gable and that tie-up with Imperium, but with Kevin Owens possibly being on the DL list for a while, I would love to see those titles on Vinci and Kaiser. I know I do the same thing with Joaquin Wilde and Cruz on the other brand, but my God, you brought these guys up. They're all At least you remember their names today. I know, all four of them. Well, I wish WWE would. They're all talented as hell. They all have a lot of experience. They can all bring a lot to that division. We had Valhalla and Maxine Dupree. Oh this my. is just like NXT, where it's like, it's not good, but it's it's totally harmless, and the crowd loves it. And Thank God for I just, in this. I can't hate it. Yeah, so they're doing this match, and, uh, you know, Valhalla's a pro. Maxine's, this is like her first ever national television <laughs> match. And, man, she, she can't do anything, but she tries. And I, I, I think that's what I like about it. Like, she tries. You know what I'm saying? Not like other people don't try, but she gives 200% out there trying to be this character and the wacky face and everything. So she's doing this match, and finally she has to do the, uh, the Caterpillar. And uh, have you guys seen Otis do the, the worm, the Caterpillar lately? Dude, he's so slow. He can barely get to his feet at the end because he's so fat. And uh, somehow, like if, if him and Maxine were doing a, a, a race, he'd, he'd like do it three times before she got through it once. She did the slowest worm of all of, all of recorded history. Like shoot worms. I mean, in, in like cement could move faster than Maxine. But she hits the elbow. And then, you know, Eric gets in the ring. A big brawl breaks out. And uh, Chad Gable does a moonsault off the post. And then, as God is my witness, <laughs> they're fighting up top. And Maxine slips underneath. She puts Valhalla on her shoulders. And she hits a Japanese ocean cyclone suplex and pins her. Amazing. Amazing. They taught her three moves. Jericho moved And that was five. one of them. Arm drag, which was her number one offensive and defensive move. Then it was the worm. And then the natural progression, the Japanese ocean suplex or cyclone suplex. Absolutely ridiculous finish. Judgment Day came out, talk about how they ran the show. Finn talks about SummerSlam. Finn's so great. He's got to win this title. Like, he's so great. His promos he's cutting. He's just absolutely obsessed with getting his revenge on Seth after seven years. And then Dominic did the promo. And then who should come out but Raquel? And Raquel goes after Rhea. They get into a brawl. Raquel's pounding on her. 
And for the first time, Dom has to run distraction for Rhea so that Rhea can chop block Raquel, stomp on her knee, and put her out of action. I know nobody will that, had but that was a nice touch. Two incredible Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler video packages. I'm talking full-out incredible. These were the best video packages in forever. And they look back at the beginning of their friendship, Ultimate Fighter, Ronda telling the story about how they... They were rolling after like 11 weeks on the show, and Shayna, which is true, by the way, Shayna goes, man, I made it 11 weeks. You haven't tapped me one time. Amateur. Ronda mutilated her at that point. <laughs> and then they go to Shayna, and she goes, yeah, you know, we're supposed to be friends, but, man, Ronda, she put me up in her house for free. But the only reason, it wasn't the goodness of her heart. It was there because she wanted people to beat up. And I helped prep her for every one of her fights, and she beat me up every time. And do you know how many of my training camps she ever showed up to? Zero. I went to WWE. Ronda went to WWE. She was the one, of course, that got pushed all the way to the top, and I'm sick of it. It's awesome. Then we had a segment with Alpha Academy and Imperium. And Imperium is making fun of Alpha Academy. You know, Otis is fat. Maxine's talking for this Olympic gold medalist, how far former, he's fallen. Former, look at yourself now. And finally, Ludwig says, don't worry about this guy. He couldn't last five minutes with you. And Gable says, I'd last five hours. You want to do this tonight? Leave your nerds in the back. I'll leave mine. Let's do this. And Gunther said, all right, let's do it. We had uh, Ciampa and Nakamura. Finish came out of nowhere. Nakamura pinned him, used the tights. This made Bronson Reed backstage happy. Raquel's getting her knee checked out. They postponed the match. Then we had an amazingly, like, amazing segment. Cowboy Brock comes down to the ring. He's in his chaps. He's in his hat. Chaps. Got his vest on. Lord. Comes down and he cuts his promo, which was just, like, the, the funny thing is, he really honestly is not that much better than Gable Stevenson, but he's Brock. I swear to God, this is what he goes. He says, Let's cut the crap. I've been here too long tonight. Cody, if you want to come out here and tell me otherwise, come out here, shake my hand, and I'll see you Saturday. But if you don't come out here and shake my hand, I'll see you Saturday. <laughs> what? What are you trying to say, bro? Spit it out, dude. And so Cody comes out, and he offers him the handshake. Brock shakes his hand, goes to leave. They do the shoulder check deal. Brock gets out of the ring. And, man, if I ever saw a Vince McMahon segment, this was it. I've seen this a thousand times. Cody goes for the dive from behind. They get in a brawl. Brock beats him and beats him and beats him and beats him. Finally, they play Brock's music. He starts going to the back. He decides I ain't done yet. Comes back out. He beats him, and he beats him, and he beats him. They play his music a second time. He starts going to the back. He decides he wants to beat him more. He comes back, and he beats him, and he beats him, and he gives him an F5 and leaves him for dead. And not even sweating, tips the hat, walks to the back. I was like, I'm supposed to be more into the match after the go-home angle, not less. I was flabbergasted. But, you know, Cody's going to win on Sunday. You know, he overcame the odds. But, my God, they would have been better off not even being on this show and just on a video package. So, Gunther and Chad Gable, five-minute challenge. Crowd got into it because of the clock. And uh, Gable ends up giving him a Frankenstein to the outside, slips into the ring. He wins. He is declared the winner over Gunther. Gunther says, this match is not over. I'm going to decide when this is over. Restart this match. So, they come back. They went back and forth. It's great. Delayed German suplex. Chad goes for the chaos theory again. Finally, Gunther avoids it, chops him to death, power bombs him for the pin. This was great. And then Gunther says he's going to do the same thing to Drew McIntyre coming up on Sunday. We had the Becky angle. She came out, challenges Trish Stratus since she beat Zoe last week. Trish goes, nah, nah I'll, I'll decide when it's going to be. But then Pierce comes out and goes, no. I heard the stip. This match is happening tonight. So Trish is forced to get in the ring. They ring the bell. Zoe immediately hits the ring. The bell rings again. Two-second match. 
Heels are double teaming her afterwards. Trish gets the chair, beats down Becky. They go to the back all happy that they, they put one over on her. But then after commercial, that's when Pierce meets with her and says, unacceptable. I will be generous, give you some time to prepare. It will be on your home turf, which, by the way, makes no sense in storyline. In Winnipeg, it is you and Becky and Zoe is banned from ringside. Manitoba, I've heard, is a horrible, horrible place, and it produces horrible, horrible people. If it was really on Trisha's home turf, it would have been in a beautiful province like Ontario. And another run to Shana's segment. Essentially, like, both of these women think they did everything for the other, and they both were betrayed. And so it's funny because, like I mentioned a few weeks ago, like they kept going back and forth, who's the babyface heel. On the actual formats backstage listing who is a babyface and heel, they're both listed as heels. But if you watch these segments, they're basically both babyfaces who feel they've been wronged by the other one. Anyway, these segments were great. And then the main event, Sammy and Seth versus Dom and Priest. And uh, they did, like... So much stuff at the end, but the crowd's eating it up. So Rollins makes a tag, hits Priest with three straight topes, sends him over the announce table. He manages to get back in the ring, goes for the south of heaven, and Seth sets up for the stomp. Rhea distracts him. Dom lays out Seth. Sammy goes after Dom, so Rhea starts screaming at him. Finn ends up drop-kicking him into the barricade. Back in the ring, Priest hits Seth with the razor's edge, but then he notices the briefcase. Now's his chance. He goes, Finn, get that briefcase. I'm cashing in. Of course, Finn, he's got a title match on Sunday. So he's all hesitant, but finally he's like, ah, here's a briefcase, but it's too late. Seth super kicks it into his face. Finn goes after Seth. Sammy boots him off the apron. Seth hits Priest with the stomp and pins him. So, uh... Seth Rollins getting the win here. I was overjoyed because that tells me he's losing on and Saturday on SummerSlam. Wait, Guan's on here. Finn Balor's going to get that title, brother. Why did Finn hesitate with the briefcase? It would have solved all their problems because it's wrestling. That's why. Of course, it makes sense. He doesn't want this guy to cash in. He wants to win the title. So Ricky Starks comes out for a promo. God, this was the weirdest segment I have seen in I don't even know how long. Ricky Starks, last week, cheated to win the Owen Hart Cup. So this man comes out, and he is cheered. He talked about how much money he had, his expensive shoes, his expensive bag. Mm -hmm. He's rich, you see. So to review, if you cut a promo saying that you have expensive things like, oh, I don't know, a Tesla or a watch, and you only eat the finest steaks in the finest steakhouses, people might not like you. I have no what idea thinking? what you're talking about. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today, and don't miss out.